Mark, a quick question, then I'll get to you, Mike, because I, I want to, for some reason, hope springs eternal on Twitter, right? That's what it's there for. And, you know, I have <clears throat> been, I think it's safe to say, very negative about the president on Twitter. Uh, and other people have been very negative. But this weekend, there seemed to be a turn where a lot of people who are negative have started to talk about impeachment. And have started to talk about, okay, maybe he's going to resign now. And have started to talk about... Like, the fact, like that Donald Trump is going to leave town and that things are different now than they've ever been before. I'm just as negative on his performance. In fact, more negative. Uh, Charlottesville, obviously, was, it was one of the most uh, just unbelievably heartbreaking things for anybody that loves America uh, that we've ever seen come out of the White House. But he's not going anywhere, Mark, is he? I mean, there are no... I, I just, where is this coming from? Because people look at you know, White Houses play offense and defense. What's on the list of playing defense? Afghanistan, North Korea, the Mueller investigation, the debt, the debt yeah. ceiling. But that doesn't mean he's, it's, he's it's resigning all, it's, or of being course not. But, or but, leaving. But because he's doing nothing on offense, and offense would be tax reform, would be front right. and center, because there's no sign they're doing anything on offense, it's easy for the very large percentage of the country, tens of millions of Americans, mm -hmm. who would like him to go, mm -hmm. to think that's what's happening. I spent three days in Hollywood talking to Hollywood people. Hollywood. They all, they all just want to know when's he leaving. It's yeah. not if. They're all just like, what's yeah. the date when he's out of yeah. office? So you've gone to, you, went to, you went to the heart of America. I wanted to get my, I put my finger on the pulse of like an important segment. Yeah, yeah. An important segment. So you bring yeah. that up only to say, talk about. Well, they're kind of the extreme case, 3,000 miles away. Yeah, they're, they're, they, they simply want to know when he's leaving. He's just not, he's not yeah. going anywhere yeah. until Bob Mueller says he's going somewhere. <laughs> Jeremy. Well, you were, you were asking about strategy and where, 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 where the strategy is. And now that uh, Bannon's gone and if Bannon even had a strategy, one of the things that Bannon did realize is that you're not going to get those voters that Mark is talking about. You're, there is nobody out there who, is, who didn't vote for Donald Trump the first time around who's saying, you know what? Maybe he's not so bad. Let me give him a second look. That's just not happening. And Bannon understood that. And so his argument was, you got to double down on the base. You got to go back to trade. You got to go back to immigration and tell these people who supported you that you are keep, show them that you're keeping your promises. But unfortunately for Trump, that, that list of promises uh, is, is, is unfair. And, and you're right, Joe, that wasn't a strategy, but it was an ideology. I mean, you could say, well, there was some political theory to that of populism, but, but, and that's what but, populism, nationalist populism was. But I don't know what the political, we don't know what, how far that goes for Trump right. himself. And maybe now we'll learn whether Trump really is a economic nationalist or populist. By, we'll learn that, but he lost we don't three million know votes. This is what I never understood about Steve Bannon's just play to the base. He lost by three million votes. He barely scraped by in Michigan and Wisconsin. I mean, he, he just, everything that happened right that one day happened. And it's a reason why he won. And to say, we're just going to go back and get the same people the same. so we can yeah. lose by three million votes again and cross our fingers yeah. and hope every domino falls. It was, that's just idiotic. Well, I'll give you one. They, they, they should, they, from the start, they should have tried to grow their base. Uh, d despite what he says, because your base wasn't big enough. If he had won by 52%, I'd say, play to your 52%. Ignore the other 48% if that's the only thing you can do. But that's why Bannon so misplayed his hand is because they were playing the base, playing the base, playing the base. It was already a small base. And part of those people that voted for him are people that didn't approve of him at the time. They were mainstream Republicans who said, God, I can't stand him and I can't stand Hillary. I just can't vote for Hillary. I'm not going to admit it to anybody, but I can't vote for Hillary. And then they would go in and vote for Trump. And there were millions of mainstream Republicans who did that who now would never vote for Donald Trump because of what Steve Bannon and Donald Trump have done over the past Without months. Without question. And things like Charlottesville make all this much tougher. But I'll give you one example of something that Bannon was for that now I don't think anyone in the administration is for that's more, that's more that is about more than appealing to the base. Tax cuts. Bannon advocated changing the proposed tax cut to not give as much, much to the wealthy, make it much more you middle class. You wanted to raise taxes, class. right, on the rich? Well, or keep so them the same. Keep the, the rate the same. Not give the rich a tax cut in terms of the marginal right. rate. 
That is that is meant to appeal to expand the appeal of people Trump could appeal to. Now right. again, they've done so many other things that makes it difficult. But that's now gone. I don't think there's a single person in the administration now who would like to, to do it that way, except maybe the president. But I don't think he's going to get his way. Well, you know, the uh, political tragedy of Steve Bannon is if you look at what he and Trump were talking about, which was sort of a conservative populist worldview and being tougher on countries that had taken advantage of us in the past and not just paying all of your attention to tax cuts for the rich, that is something that actually gets you beyond. Yeah. Uh, you That's know, what they plan. Not 40, the 42, state. 45 Actually, percent. And also on immigration, which, by the way, I, I always thought that abortion was the issue that isolated people in the media from like half of America more than any other issue. There's a new winner. It's immigration. Mm -hmm. Eighty percent of Americans agree with Steve Bannon and Donald Trump's view of less immigration in America. They may not, they may not agree with all the harshness, but Donald Trump wasn't losing numbers. Mm -hmm. because of immigration while we were all freaking out on TV. But what Steve Bannon showed, uh, Harold, was, you know, you can have ideas that might work, but if you don't know how to implement them, and more importantly for Donald Trump and everybody in the administration, if you don't know how to get along with people in Washington, if you don't understand that Washington is a game of addition and subtraction, and it's like what you and I did. I don't agree with you on this issue. You don't agree with me on this issue. But hey, look, I've got this bill. I want it to pass. It's worked together. What, how, how do you want to change it, Joe? Which is the first time I met Harold. Said, hey, here's a plan I've got for education reform. Look at it. Anything you change, and we'll work together on it. They, they don't understand that. It's a zero-sum game for them. And until they understand that, they're going to keep losing. It was reported that during the health care debate, Bannon, that Steve Bannon went over to the Cap Capitol Hill and said to Republicans, you better do this, and spoke down to a lot, of, a lot of members of Congress, particularly Republicans, which didn't go over very well. Remember, the Re Republicans control the House and the Senate. Their voters in Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania are wondering, we elected this guy. He said he was going to make health care better. He said he was going to make trade better. He was going to go after those countries. Not only that, Harold, he said it was going to be job. easy. Oh, no, he this said is all easy. of this would be easy. I'm the biggest said, deal maker of all time. He would lower taxes for people, particularly small businesses. None of these things have happened. And I think a lot of people in these states, to your point about the national press and cable press, people kind of, a lot of these states, they listen, but at the end of the day, they step back and wonder they do their own assessment. The things that he promised to do, health care, taxes, trade, jobs, there hasn't been much, there hasn't been any progress on. And particularly when you look at health care, that's the Republican identity for seven years was to undo yeah. uh, the Affordable Care Act. And President Trump, then candidate Trump said, it will be easy to do. I will make make health care more affordable, more accessible, just watch. And people have watched and nothing has happened. Steve Bannon, to your point, you can't grow your base without adding people to your base. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't grow that base unless you execute. Even with Bannon there, to Mark's point, he was a strategist, but there was no one who could execute. The person who's likely is to execute, Reince Priebus, has been pushed out. So you have no one there who's able to say taxes or whatever, we have to get done. But I go back to Heidi's point, the debt ceiling, if they don't get this done, I mean, the kind, of, uh, the kind of roiling of markets and the roiling yep. of the country, and for that matter, global markets, will happen in a, a Guess what they're going to have to do to get it done? Major way. Work with Democrats. They're, they're going to have to work with Democrats. I, I talked to somebody in the administration, a fire breather, and was asked, you know, at the end, well, what's your, your you know, you've been around here for a while. What's your advice? They said, politics is a game of addition. Go forth and make friends. <laughs> That's what it's about, addition. And seven months in, the Trump administration still doesn't understand that. You've got to actually get people on your side that you don't naturally agree with and that, doesn't, that they don't naturally agree with you. This would be a really good morning to call Chuck Schumer. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.